All right, welcome back. It's to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. And former President Goodluck Jonathan has been in the news for the past 24 hours. Specifically, human rights lawyer Femi Falando says that the former president cannot contest in the 2023 presidential election, citing constitutional provisions barring the ex-president from seeking re-election. Now, the senior lawyer said this in a statement in response to growing calls on Jonathan to throw his hat into the ring ahead of the 2023 election. He said Mr. Jonathan, who was Nigerian president between 2010 and 2015, would breach constitutional term limits of two terms of eight years if he runs for the presidency and wins again. He recalled that Jonathan became the president of Nigeria in 2010 following the sudden death of President Omar Erdogan. Now, Erdogan later uh, contested and uh, won the 2011 presidential election. We have Nick, a public affairs analyst, joining us in this conversation. Good morning to you, Mr. Agole. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Yeah, good morning to you. Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it is indeed our pleasure. For some time now, for days running into weeks, uh, you know, the media has been awash uh, with the president would calls for the former president to, you know, join the presidential race, and uh, even uh, people are asking him to join the APC and all of that. But you know how it has played out over time now. Content lawyer Femi Falona and even a whole lot of them, um, SANs, uh, you know, vowing to sue the president or the former president if he declares interest to run, that it is unconstitutional. First of all, let me just get up your specific background and see how you reason all of that. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that question. I am not a lawyer, so let me serve that caveat uh, up front. But I am a Nigerian citizen who is interested in governance in Nigeria and our public affairs. So, my reading of the Constitution of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, in Section 137, Subsection 3, says, a person who was sworn in to complete the term for which another person was elected as president shall not be elected to such office for more than a single term. So if I give a layman's interpretation to that provision of the Constitution, it then means that former President Goodlord Jonathan was sworn in to complete the term of the let president Umaru Musaya Adua, and therefore he is entitled to be elected to the office of the president for one more single term. And that single term happened when former president Goodlord Jonathan was elected as president in 2011. Therefore, looking at the Constitution as I am reading here, as a layman, I would say that President Goodlord Jonathan, former President Goodlord Jonathan, can no longer seek for election to another term. This is what I interpret from the Constitution as I am reading to you. But you also have, uh, you know, some other quarters, um, some quarter arguing that the law that has been quoted by Falunar saying that he cannot become president again, uh, that law was made, he had already been sworn in twice. So um, he had already been sworn in twice before the law was made. And so the argument is, do we backdate the law? I had the revered legal luminary, Femi Falana Sam, yesterday on a television program where he made several quotations of judgments that have been delivered by competent courts in Nigeria in the past, 
that affirm that when a law is made, as in this case, the amendment of the Nigeria Constitution, after an event has happened, that the law takes retroactive effect back to when that event happened. So if we go by the submission of the revered uh, legal gentleman, Femi Falano, it then means that even though the Constitution was amended after President Goodlord Jonathan had already been sworn in for two terms, that this amendment will take retroactive effect to the two terms he has said before the amendment. All right, uh, a lot of um, <clears throat> you know, reactions have uh, followed that particular development. Specifically, you know, a lot of people are vowing to go to, to court over that, and um, they are saying that, um, let me just uh, read something to you. Uh, the Vice Chairman and Director of Public Affairs of the Igbo Leadership Development Foundation, Dr. Law, Mefor said his group will be going to court to challenge Jonathan should he declare his interest. Mefor stated that this, uh, the People's Democratic members of the House of Reps want uh, the ex-president accepting offers of the APC and Buhari. Okay, explaining the stand of the ILDF, Mefor, who believes the next president should be from the Southeast region, argued that Jonathan had been affected by the constitutional amendment and thus had no right. So specifically, uh, do you really think uh, this particular uh, case, if it goes to court, will actually stand based on merit? Well, I, I, I have no idea how the courts are going to decide this. Because, you know, sometimes in Nigerian courts, even when the facts are very clear, the courts can throw out a case on technical grounds. So until this is taken to court and it is judged all the way, I believe, to the Supreme Court, before we were able to know where the Lord Justices, on which side of the divide, the Lord Justices are going to fall on. And I would say it is a good thing. It's going to deepen our democracy. It will add to our common law. If this is actually tested in the courts, let the courts, who are the constituted authority to interpret our laws, be the one to have a final say in this debate that is happening. No, but, but, but you know, um, we still have this argument, they're still saying that um, this law came after. This law came after he had completed his tenure. I mean, so it shouldn't affect him, and everyone is expected to, I mean, those who are actually holding on this argument are saying that Falana, of all people, should know about this part of it, that it, it doesn't really hold him, because at the time, he had already completed his tenure before the law came in, you know, came on board. But um, looking at it now, what would you expect of, you know, Jonathan at the time? W would you say that it's okay for him, you know, to go ahead and uh, pursue it if he's been pressured? Because he feels like he's not the one who wants to become president, but you have a lot of Nigerians who have, tr you know, trunked out on the streets and are asking him to become president or contest for the position of um, the president. So the, the, the legal case has already been laid by the likes of uh, Femi Falan Hassan uh, that there has been court rulings in the past that have affirmed that new laws passed have retroactive effect. But I am going to also look at it from a layman's point of view to say that you know, Former President Goodlord Jonathan has already served, uh, okay, has already been sworn in twice before the amendment of the Nigerian Constitution. He is now trying to go and stand for election under this new constitution because it is not the old constitution that is going to govern his desire to become president again. He is not going to become president, and the operating constitution is the amended one, as we speak today. And therefore, he has to abide or qualify to be elected as a president 
under the subsisting law, under the current law, under the law that we have as of today. And that law, as we have as today, in section 137, subsection 3, is saying that he cannot be elected again as president because he has already served a single term after he was sworn in the first time to complete the tenure of late President Omar Musa Yaradwa. So if we look at it from this perspective, then we will say that Mr. Jonathan's case may be weak because he cannot be facing today's law and then, and then sitting on yesterday's law and saying, I was qualified with yesterday's law and therefore I can disobey today's law. I don't think that's going to likely hold water. But like I said, the courts are the ones who are going to give a final budget on this. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, bring in um, some legal perspective to all of this. We have joining us right now human rights lawyer, uh, Barrister Justice Uhuibu. Good morning to you, Barrister Uhuibu. Thanks for joining us in this discourse. Yeah, good morning. Pleasure. All right, Justice, uh, let's try and get the whole legal perspective because we need to get lots more clarity after uh, uh, Femi Fallon or SAN came out to explain why uh, the former president cannot run. There seems to be the talk of um, uh, the former president being sworn in twice. And of another issue again is that uh, uh, he should not run for more than eight years. Just try and explain all of this to us. Well, the good thing is that... Uh like uh, uh, Femi Fallon and the other person in League of Might, the law is without any The issue now is as a piece to do, which law is going to govern the 2020 election? And by and large, provided there has been an amendment of the constitution, it is the constitution that affects. Now, I will govern the conduct of the country and any other that will be done. So we cannot go in the past. The law as it is today, the amendment as it is today, will not give Jonathan the right to contest again. So, um, the former law uh, has been committed. It has nothing anybody to do about it. Uh, I'm moving away from that. Thinking about the issue of women being sworn in two times and other is it about issues of law? I know that law is law, but that's a conflict of law. But I don't think there's any conflict. We must look at it politically and do the work for controlling the law, as it's supposed to be. We mustn't play politics with everything. So, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the law is concerned, the amended section of the Constitution that is in fact the other has to be is the government of the law and the nothing anybody can do about it. All right. but, but do you think that the law, I mean, quickly before we, um, you know, move back to Nika Gule, do you think that the law, this amended part, uh, applies to him, or uh, the amended part works retroactive. Well, if it is a retroactive, uh, you must look at the law. The question we should be asking first: Will there an amended section, an amended constitution, which law are we addressing as it is now? Well, you see, most times some of these things are issues of identity that will not uh, hold water. You know, it is only when politicians want to do something that they want to begin to look at the law, to take the law and not. Let me say this. Let me lawyer not be. There is what we call the interpretation of statutes in the law. And most times, there are what we call the mischief interpretation. Okay, you look at the mischief that the law is trying to clear. So lawyers know this. Even the legislators, they don't look at the law. Who have the mischief rule? 
Well, well, I, I wish we were able to hear you clearly. I mean, the, the audio is not very clear, and unfortunately, that's a legal question. But we'll, we'll just move away from you know that, and we're hoping that we're able to reconnect with you and get your perspective, whether or not that part of the amended law is re retroactive, in the sense that um, it was done, he had completed his tenure at the time before the law became. And so... Uh, what should we be looking at at this point in time? However, Nika Gule is still part of the conversation. Uh, Nika Gule, are you with us? Yes. All right, so um, moving from now, do you see um, those who are not in support? I mean, do you see a lot of uh, litigation against uh, the former president? Yes, there will be litigation either way. If the president contests, there will be litigation. If he is banned from contesting, those who support him, I believe we also approach the courts so that they will uh, fight for his own rights. And we cannot wait to see that litigation play out. But as a public affairs analyst, let me drag this conversation to my own territory. As a public affairs analyst, I will say that because we have been discussing the constitutional qualification of former president, good Lord Jonathan, for another term of office as a president. I am dragging the conversations now to public affairs analysis. And I will say that from a public affairs analysis perspective, President good Lord Jonathan is not qualified to become our president again. Because we have already tested him. He was vice president from 2007 to 2010. And from 2010 to 2015, that is six years, I mean five years, 2010 to 2015, five years, he was our president. But he, did, he didn't complete, let's not forget that he was, um, I mean, he was vice president to the late uh, Musa Yaradwa, and mm. he didn't complete the tenure of, um, I mean, he had to complete the tenure, so it was not like he was elected independently to become president. According to the constitution, he had to replace him. So uh, how do we explain the remaining and a half? Bring, I think we should bring the barrister in to, in to explain that to us. Barrister uh, Uhwebu, can you explain more of that uh, to us? Because uh, people are talking about two terms. Like Mercy had said, uh, he only completed the tenure of uh, his former principal, uh, Musa Erdua, and that uh, he ran for four years again. But the, another issue, maybe I may not really understand the law so well, but the fact was that for 2015, uh, he was also supposed to contest. So if we were supposed to sum everything up together, he would have done the, two, uh, the year he completed for the, the former president, uh, Erdua, his four years, and if he had won in 2015, there would be another four years. How do you explain all of these uh, you know, gray areas, uh, Barrister Unhegu? Yes, um, for me, I think that uh, uh, my friend, the said, um, you know, he's going to be a question of litigation, which the court might likely decide at the next over to go uh, to give directly. But the truth is this whether he has uh, contested before or not, for me, is not What we should be looking at is the law. I think well, our most focus should be on the decision. It is today, and not even whether the right and whether it has been many two times, three times, and all the ones are accused of argument in logic. But let us talk more. The question here is that the current position in a written people is Mr. Dinner Jonathan eligible to continue this election or not? You think that we are supposed to do? Because if you begin to allow the issue of the when he was running, he did the first thing and then the YouTube stuff on necessary sentences by Nigeria. I'm even surprised to tell you the truth that uh, the general government is not talking about uh, election in Nigeria. If you do that, so that they will not be in the mass, as far as I'm concerned. Pastor Hick, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm here. 
Okay, but all of this, now let me just um, digress a little bit. Now, all of this clamor, you know, for the former president um, to get back into power, it has been very debatable on social media across some various fairs. A lot of people are saying that uh, if he were to come back, that he would right some of those wrongs that we are seeing right now. How do you reason, really? Well, I think um, if you... I don't, I don't even see it happening. Personally, I don't see it happening. Uh, and that is why I'm not taking it up so serious. I think all these things are still uh, speculations and uh, all the rest. But I know we must have a legal team. I know we must have people that are advising me and all the rest. But for me, for me, as far as I'm concerned, he is not qualified to contest for the next uh, election. So, but he should put himself and be careful. Everything, you don't play politics is everything. When you begin to listen to psychophants and all the rest, they will end up at the end of the day embarrassing you and messing you up. This is Nigeria. We know how they play the game and everything. So I will advise him to take the little respect or the respect he has also. The name he has attained for himself and uh, build on that than all these unnecessary issues of Jonathan here, Jonathan there, and all the rest. So you should just listen to people like us and leave psycho fans alone. If, uh, if there's any time he's needed in government for one advice or the other, you should not instead to come and provide advice and all the rest. That is my own take. But he should not uh, uh, do things that will, that will corner him for unnecessary legal battle and all the rest. And the problem in Nigeria will continue to be to, to, to linger. And somebody who now says he wants to be a messiah or he has done it well before will now become the actual issue or problem uh Nigeria has. I don't even see him uh, even if he joins APC now or PDP, I don't even see him getting the PDP. Um um let's get back to Nika Gule uh who's still with us hopefully. Nick, do we still have you with us? I'm here. All right. So, but it feels like it's a pattern with our politicians. I mean, if you look at it, we feel we, we seem to be going in circles. So you have a former president becoming, coming back to becoming the president or maybe the vice president. It's a thing with us. And so it, we just keep going back in that circle. Does it really mean that... Um, those who have become president or vice president at the time, whether or not military or non-military era, are the ones that have the solution to um, the problems of Nigeria. Why is it that we to always gravitate towards past leaders to become future leaders? I think it's a very wrong thing for us to be doing this, what you have described. Because the best job interview you can give to a candidate is to see the candidate perform on that job. And we are seeing these past leaders perform on the job, and they don't do a good job with it. President Goodlock Jonathan himself, after five years as a president, he didn't deliver much. Um, I think a lot of people are clamoring for him because if his performance was at 30%, President Buhari has taken that performance to about 15 10%. And so Nigerians are looking at 15 10%, and uh, they are now yearning that maybe we should have gone back to that 30%. Because uh, I ran President uh, uh, Goodlord Jonathan 30% because President Goodlord Jonathan did not touch on the fundamental issues that are bedeviling Nigeria. He is from the Niger Delta. And one of the biggest issues in the Niger Delta is pollution, environmental pollution coming from uh, gas flares. The oil companies produce gas and they set it on fire. It loses money for Nigeria we don't have electricity that the gas should have been used in generating, and it is causing environmental damage, air pollution to his own Niger Delta people. In five years, Jonathan saw gas flares and left gas flares and did nothing with it. Jonathan saw refineries, four of them broken down, and he left them four broken down, and he continued to pay few few subsidies. He didn't deal with that. Jonathan made exchange rates and left it at, as it was, even though Buhari has worsened it. You know, Jonathan didn't do much in agriculture to unlock value from agriculture. Nigeria continued to import food. 
Nigeria, a country blessed with the best fertile soil in the whole world, with a good climate to match and sufficient amount of rainfall. There was no industrial mechanized agriculture that he set in motion that today Nigeria would have been food sufficient and exporting food. He didn't deal with that. He didn't deal with corruption. Look at the kind of things that his own minister for petroleum, no, Madam uh, Alice Imadu, okay. was engaging in. We're not saying, we're not just, I mean, leaving this with uh, Jonathan and the fact that he's been pressured to uh, join the race for 2023 to become president. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if he has declared his interest. I mean, we have not heard that he has actually come out to say, I want to become president and via a particular political party. But the question is, why do we still have leaders? I mean, past leaders, maybe from the military. Look at the, the president, the current president, or was a former president, I mean, uh, during the military um, you know, regime. And so you have, maybe you also look at the, the current um, aspirants who are running for the presidency. You have past vice president. And so it feels like it has to always be around the president, former president, or the vice president, and all of those persons. Does it really mean that power centers with this person or the experience, or they have the solution to the problem? Why do we always, and why do they always have to push themselves, you know, in the race? I think, I think uh, there, there is a lot of executive power in Nigeria. When people test executive power in Nigeria, they, they don't want to leave it. I mean, if you were in the UK like Boris Johnson, you had a party during COVID, and the police are coming into your house to interview you, to convict you of criminal offense. When you are in that kind of office, you can't wait to leave it. But when you are in an office where you almost like a, you are almost like a maximum leader, you know, uh, you, you are above the law. Nobody can touch you. Everything is at your back and call. People want to stay in there. And we have, we have seen these people come back. Obasanjo came back. You know, uh, Buhari has come back. Uh, Osibajo wants to come back. Jonathan wants to come back. And we have seen that they cannot deliver anything. Because if they had delivered, Nigeria would be a better place than we are today. We're in a Nigeria today where a pregnant woman is being kidnapped and is being held on Nigerian soil. And the, the bandits even went and brought uh, doctors to come and deliver her, her baby in bondage. And the bandits had the temerity to take the pictures of that baby and show it to the Nigerian uh, public. And we have armed forces. We have a commander in chief of the armed forces. And they are going to bed and sleeping. And Nigerian citizens are being held in bondage on Nigerian soil. It's not as if they've taken them to a All foreign right, country. You, they are here with us. All right, and this is the kind of Nikabli. people who want to always come back again. All right, and the reason you, why they're coming back is because they have taken possession of the electoral process. They control the parties and all of that. And that is where Nigerian citizens have to come in. We all right, thank you so much, Nikangale, for your thoughts this morning. We just have to wrap it up at that particular, uh, you know, thought that you just left off. Uh, Nick Agole is a public affairs analyst. We were also joined by Barrister Justice uh, Ohebu. Thank you so much, um, gentlemen. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, and have a nice day. All right, uh, it is still the breakfast uh, In a moment, uh, we'll come back and give you a roundup of what happened in the world of sports uh, lately. Just stay with us.